morning, Quack Captain 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Doug Troyer. Doug was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins his shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quack Captain 101 here, with a review of a neat new drone, the FQ777 F8 Monster Drone. Now, what is the Monster Drone? Well, if you look at it, you say, well, it's another one of those folding drones. Yes, it is. Um, it folds out like so, the front arms go out like so, and the back arms, be very careful folks, the back arms go down and up like so, they swivel down, so don't try to force them out sideways or you'll break it. And then once they open it up, you got to open up the landing legs like so, there are four landing legs on this, and that's the unfolded version of the drone. Now what is this monster drone? Here's the monster drone insignia. Looking at it, you'll see right away that it is a brushless motor drone. I believe these are, yeah, these are 1406 brushless motors on this to give it more power, more efficiency from the motors as opposed, as opposed to a uh, brush motor drone. Uh, but what is really special about it is this is one of the a lower cost drone that comes with a two axis stabilized gimbal. Okay, that's to keep the image uh, stable, even if the drone's bouncing about like so, the camera will automatically try to maintain level view uh, so you don't get a bouncy picture from this particular drone is the idea. Now, the camera on this um, is being advertised as a 4K camera. Uh, that's not quite correct. Um, it is not quite 4K, but it's not 1080p either. It's somewhere in between, folks. Yeah, the resolution of this is 2592 by 1520 pixels okay that's pretty dang high resolution and it uh, it uh, records that at 25 frames per second okay so this is a lot higher resolution than uh, 1080p but it's not quite 4k either 4k is 3840 by 2160 pixels now again this is being advertised as 4k uh, the way they're doing this folks is the software that you use with this particular drone the vs gps app automatically interpolates automatically electronically enlarges the photos that are recorded to your phone and records those photos as 3840 by 2160 pixel photos so that that's how they're claiming 4k folks it's not quite accurate not quite correct but again this is not quite a 1080p camera either it's a lot better camera but it's not quite a 4k camera and actually i think it's a security camera is what they're putting in here you know these home style uh these home security cameras um, that you're seeing pop up right and left everywhere. I think they put one in here, folks. Um, it comes with a wide-angle lens, so expect, you know, wide-angle views, but also expect to see, uh, with that wide-angle views, a lot of curvature, okay? So it's not going to be uh, curvature distortion, particularly at the outer edges of the frame. So that's one of the disadvantages of having wide-angle lens. So, you know, this particular drone, even though it has stabilized gimbal, it's not really for professional photography, Okay, but it would work very well for a um, FPV um, cruiser drone, a drone that you want to send out and explore with. Okay, this would work very well, particularly with that wide angle of lens. You'll be have a nice uh, wide view of the area that you're flying over. But again, it's going to be somewhat of a curved image in the video. Um, other things about this, it is a GPS drone, of course. This one has GPS. So this one will automatically return to home and land on command, on loss of signal, or on low battery. So that, you know, like most others, <laughs> this does that also with that GPS system. It's GPS GLONASS system, so it also uh, locks on to the Russian satellite systems uh, for very fast lock-on of the satellites, very uh, fast acquisition and lock-on of the satellites as composed of just the GPS system. Now this also has, if you look on the belly here, a little optical flow sensor, a little camera that looks down at the ground. Now this is meant for indoor flying. If you're flying indoors where you're not going to have a good GPS signal, this would automatically look at the ground and maintain the drone's position horizontally above the ground by using that optical sensor. Also looking on the bottom of this particular drone, we notice an SD card slot. So this records the videos and photos both to your phone and tour to this uh, SD card. Now the advantage of the SD card is that you're not going to see Wi-Fi uh, issues that crop up with the videos that are recorded to your phone, like uh, Wi-Fi frame dropping uh, and frozen frames. You're not going to see that with this. This will enable you to also fly out farther 
than the FPV video feed that you're going to be able to get from this because this thing supposedly has a range of about 500 meters FPV video range and after that you're going to lose that FPV video but if you want to fly line of sight and go further outbound you can and this would still will still keep recording while you're the Wi-Fi video would be frozen in such a case uh, looking also on the bottom we have uh, two FPV these are the FPV transmitter antennas uh, so this is should help improve uh, transmission from this drone to your phone uh, to be able to view that video uh, at extended ranges again up, up to eight or 500 meters along with a 2.4 gigahertz FP or this is the control uh, antenna for the receiving the control signals from the controller now with a the controller I, they say that this has a range out to about one kilometer so that's pretty good, but you're not going to be able to see this out of one kilometer, folks. About 400, 500 meters maximum is what you'll be able to see this. Then you'd be flying blind. So I don't recommend doing that, but it does have the capability of doing such uh, if you wish. And also on the bottom, we have the on-off switch for the drone, and you activate it by holding it down like so, and hold it until you hear the ESCs chime in like that, and it is powered up. I'm going to unpower it again. So, and finally the battery, and the battery is inserted by this little slot here. You lift that up a bit and pry, pry the bottom out with your thumbnails, and that brings out the battery. Now, I got the two-battery version. Um, I believe this is available with multiple batteries. So, if you're considering purchasing this and wish to fly more than one flight with one battery, I recommend buying um, the multiple, ver you know, the bundled version with additional batteries. The reason being, it's going to be hard these days to purchase additional batteries for this drone after you purchase it okay and the reason being is uh safety issues with shipping lipo batteries across the ocean a lot of companies just don't want to do it because of safety issues so the way the, the company's getting around it is they're bundling offer bundles versions of this dr drone with one two or i think you might even have three batteries that you can purchase and have bundled with this but of course that adds cost to the price of the drone um, let's see, what haven't I mentioned about this drone? We mentioned the SD card recording. Let's talk about the battery since we're talking about it right now. It is a 3S 11.1 volt battery, uh, 2,500 milliamp per hour. Um, it's expected to give you 25 minutes of flight time, and that is usually in hover. Uh, realistic flight time, I'm going to expect to see around 18 minutes. We'll see, you know, with aggressive flying, which requires more power, um, especially if I put it into high speed. This thing is supposedly able to go up to, I believe, 11 meters per second. That's pretty darn fast. <laughs> we'll see if it actually can do that. Um, other things you get with the package is the battery charger for this 3S battery. Notice it's a wall charger or USB charger that you're going to need to plug into a phone wall charger. Do not try to charge this battery with your laptop. It will take forever. Laptops, USB ports just don't have the power output to charge these types of batteries. You're going to want a good phone charger, okay? A good phone wall charger, maybe about 2 amps, folks. Um, don't try it with a 1 amp or a 0.5 amp or you'll be waiting forever to charge this battery. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Other charger you get with this is this USB, uh, yeah, micro USB uh, port charger. That is for charging the controller, which I'll go into shortly. Other things you get in the package is an instruction manual. It's actually a well-written instruction manual. Unfortunately, it's very, very tiny print. I have to use a magnifying glass <laughs> with my old eyes to actually read this particular um, manual. And other things you get in the package is a uh, four spare props, total full set of spare props, a screwdriver for maintenance on the drone, and little circular sticky pads that you put underneath these landing gear on this and also here too to keep the camera up above the ground that's the idea of the landing skids and the landing pad so the camera doesn't bump on the ground so actually always make sure you open these up folks you don't want to have this uh, gimbal resting on the ground while it's opened up um and let's talk about the controller since we're at the controller now this is the controller you get it is very well labeled. All the buttons on it are well labeled. Uh, these particular antennas are, appear to be fake antennas. You see that a lot with most <laughs> most toy level drones or most drones under two three hundred dollars. These are usually fake, and that is the same with this particular uh, 
controller. Uh, but the buttons on it, let's talk about first. We'll start off with the power button. To turn this controller on, this took me a while to figure out, you don't just press it because it will automatically turn itself off again if you just press that button. But to get this to turn on, you have to do a quick press and then a long press uh, until you hear a beep. So quick press and then a long press until you hear a beep. And now it's on. So quick press, long press, and you turn it off the same way. And it has a little LCD screen. I'm not sure if that's coming in, folks. But uh, the LCD screen provides telemetry information of uh, reception power from the drone, number of satellites you're receiving, um, distance of the drone, uh, height of the drone, whether you're recording or not. And I'm trying to look with my old eyes here. Yeah, the height and distance. And... Uh, I mentioned satellites. And one cool thing about this, it has a little compass rose in the center to show you which direction that the drone is is flying, okay, the direction of flight. Now, this will would come in handy if you do fly out of FPV range of the, um, the uh, phone or the FPV video. If you lose that FPV video, you can use this compass rose to turn the drone around and bring it back toward you. If you know you're going north, if you're flying north, just fly south and this drone should come back toward you. And also at the same time, I would watch for the distance on this distance telemetry information here to make sure those numbers are decreasing as the drone is flying back toward you. Other buttons you get on this, this is the return to home button. You press that and hold it and the drone will enter into return to home mode for command return to home. Um, it does have headless mode you activate by pressing this button here and you can turn off the GPS. If you're flying indoors, you can turn off the GPS by holding this button down, this um, headless mode button down for six seconds and that will turn off the GPS and then the drone would start using that optical flow sensor to maintain the position over the ground. Now the optical flow sensor only works up to about 10 feet, 20 feet and above that the drone is going to drift. So again it's mainly meant for indoor flying. I would not recommend using it outdoors. Use the GPS when outdoors. Um, other buttons we have the camera button which you press here and that will take a photo with the drone and record both to the SD card and onto your phone. And remember, the, the video that's, or the picture that's recorded onto your phone is in HD resolution. And the vi or picture that's recorded on the SD card is the original resolution of uh, that, that eyeball resolution, 2592 by 1520 pixels. Um, you can start and stop the video camera by pressing this button here. And uh, additionally, you have automatic takeoff, automatic landing. You activate by pressing this button here. But you first need to start the motors by bringing both sticks down and out before pressing that or it will not activate. And additionally, you can adjust the rate of the drone, how fast it's flying by pressing or moving the scroll wheel here. Uh, faster you move, push it to the right and slower you move it to the left and it will pitch uh, less pitch to slow down. And uh, finally, you can adjust the camera angle of the um, lens on the camera up or down by moving this scroll wheel here here <laughs> sorry and that will raise and lower the camera uh, I think that's about it I, this is the camera holder or your phone holder on the top here but uh, other than that uh, oh yeah I forgot to mention you can open these up too to improve the grip of <laughs> on the uh, controller uh, the little grip panels come down like so and uh, I did mention this has a built-in battery you do not need to provide your own battery, but you do need to charge the battery through this micro USB port right here. Now, this drone uses the VS GPS app available with Google Play and iTunes to do FPV video and also for advanced flight modes of follow me, circle me, and waypoints. However, this is, now, this is where I need to discuss this. Uh, this particular drone requires the use, if you're using that app, you're going to require using the uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with this particular drone. Now, not everybody's phone has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. So before you purchase this drone, I strongly stress in the importance of you first checking that your phone actually has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capability. If you don't, and your phone does not have 802.11 AC, and you buy this, and you get it, you will be very disappointed when you open up the VSGPS app or try to connect your phone to this drone and find out that your phone does not see the signal from this drone and you will not be able to use the VSGPS app. You, you still will be able to fly at uh, line of sight flying though because it does record the SD card and you can activate and stop the video recording 
on the controller, but you will not see FPV video, and you will not be able to use the advanced flight modes that the VSGPS app offers, again, of follow me, circle me, and waypoints capability. So, that is the FQ7, FQ777 F8 drone. Let's take it out into the field and see how it flies. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Hi, quite comfortable when I went back again. I forgot one other thing here. Very important, what else? One additional item that this comes with is this very, very nice carrying case. Foam carrying case has little uh, switches. You open it up like so and it shows that you can hold the drone and controller and a spare battery and all its accessories within this provided um, carrying case. Really nice carrying case for this particular drone. In fact, I'm going to use it today. So now let's take it out into the field and see how it flies. So I hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101. We are out at one of my favorite flying fields for the flight of the FQ77 F8. Okay, to turn this on, we need to press and hold this button here until we hear those ESCs chime up and their lights light up, their lights are lit. And then you put it on a flat level surface and then you turn on the controller again by a quick press and then a long press until you hear a beep. Okay, the controller is now connected. So we should be connected to the drone. There, now we're connected to the drone. Now the first thing we need to do, folks, is a compass calibration. And to do such, you move this stick up and to the right and this stick down and to the left and hold them there until you hear that beep. Okay, and then you pick up the drone and with the camera pointed forward, you do a figure eight in the sky until you hear a beep. You hear that beep? We're done. That's the compass calibration. So again, you just go like that keeping the nose pointed forward as you're doing this figure eight in the sky. That's how you do the compass calibration. So next, I need to connect my drone's Wi-Fi to the uh, signal that's coming from the drone. And I do that in the Wi-Fi settings of my phone. So hold on folks, and once we're connected, I'll get the, get the app going. Okay folks, this is the VS GPS app available in Google Play and iTunes. And if you notice in the upper right corner there, the satellite insignia, you notice we got 15 satellites so far. I just turned this drone on and we got 15 satellites. So again, that's the GPS GLONASS system. It works very well. Okay, to get into the air, first off, I'm gonna start the video camera by pressing the video camera button. And it shows what we're recording in the app. And also we get a insignia in the LCD screen. Make sure you get both insignias to verify that you are recording, indeed recording. Now to take off, we're going to start the motors and then I'm going to hit the automatic takeoff button. Start the motors, you bring both sticks down and out, like so, and then press the automatic takeoff button. Actually, I think i got to hold it. Yep, hold it until it takes the air. Let me open up the handles too on this. Okay, handles are open. Now let me get into the view of the camera. Look at that widescreen view. And that's, below, that's about waist level, folks. Look, it showed my whole body. Now, let me sync up the cameras. Like so. I always do this. And then say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? Okay, very nice and bright. You should be able to see me while we're flying. Now, I'm checking. Am I seeing any propellers on my LCD screen? I'm not. So, I think I'm good there for the camera without seeing propellers. But first thing, let's check is see what type of FPV range we can get with this. So I want to go up to about 30, 40 meters, something like that. Actually, let me put my glasses on so I can see the drone too as we go out, Bob. Checking stability, and then going up and out. And away we go. 23 meters, 31 meters. Going up and out, and altitude 15. I want to go up to about 30 meters. Okay, I want to plop it right there. Checking stability at that distance there, 93 meters, st still stable. Turning to the left a bit and heading outbound. And going up higher again. I said I want to go up to about 30 meters for maximum FPV range. We still got FPV. Seeing reflections off that airplane, so or that drone, so we should be able to see it farther than normal today with the sun behind my back here. I want to go up to 30 meters, 27, 28, 29, 30 meters. And how's my FPV video? Still getting FPV. And still heading outbound, 250 meters. 
And coming up to 93 meters, but 300 meters. How are we doing? I lost signal. 300 meters still going up though. Going out, we are at 341 meters. Let's see if I can regain the signal. Going up a bit higher. There, I got the signal back. Going up a bit higher. Let's take it up to about 40 meters. See if that helps. Okay, we're at 38, 38, 38 meters should be good. Let's go out a little bit further. I seem to have lost FPV. Or no, no, I still got it. Still got it. Let's go up higher then. 386 meters. See if we actually can get 500 meters. 412 meters. Oh, lost it again. 44 meters up. But I am going to fly it out to about 500 meters. As long as I can see a little dot in the sky. Oh, that signal back again. It's very intermittent, though. Very intermittent, though. 492 meters. And we do, yeah, so you can get up about, about 500 meters in distance. 520 right now. Let me go a little further. I'll take it out to 530. And from that point there, let's see if I can rotate and regain signal. Okay, I'm pointing south right now. I'm going to try to fly it back, folks, by the way, using the, uh, there. Now it's pointing the opposite direction it was that it was taken off when it took off. I'm pushing forward right now and seeing if the, the yes, it is decreasing in range. 535 meters, 533. So you can use this compass rose to bring it back, too. So keep that in mind, folks. Make a note of the direction it was pointed when it took off and then press that compass rose and it should, you know, go the opposite direction. It should come back. Let's do automatic return to home now. Pressing the automatic to return to home. Okay, 517 meters, 513, 507. It's coming back fast. 500, 492. It's zipping back to me. And our battery power is 66%, which is still pretty good. Coming back. But I have not regained FPV. So unfortunately, it looks like one of those deals where we're not going to get FPV back again. If you fly out of range, you're not going to get FPV back until it... Um, Comes back and lands in most cases. I see it. it's coming back like a banshee though. It's zipping back. Way up there. Coming up overhead. Now we're 40 meters up or so. How high? 47 meters up. <laughs> so it's got to descend from way up there. 47 meters. Coming down. Coming down, descending. So that, that's another thing to keep in mind, folks. If you set it up high, it could take a while to come back down again because it's descending slowly. And the idea is it's trying to avoid entering into vortex ring state uh, where the propellers go into its prop wash and they lose lift and it crashes. Um, that's why it's coming that slow, to avoid that. But it's descending nice and slow. Uh, while it's coming down, let's lower that gimbal. Oh, I can't tell. If, <laughs> I don't have FPV. I can't see what the, the view is on the gimbal. I'm sorry. Hoping to regain the FPV signal, but uh, looks like I am going to need to reboot the app to do such. Boy, that's a slow descent, isn't it? Keep that in mind if you're flying this. Uh, flying this and you set it up high it could take a while to come back down again in LVC or in uh, return to home send that point that gimbal back up again and not too bad not too bad a foot and a half or so from two feet from its takeoff position very very good actually so let's see about me regaining the connect here let me turn off that return to home first off by pressing that button there and let's see if I can regain the signal by rebooting the app. So hold on, folks. Okay, I just let the, the aircraft sit on the pad for about another minute, and then it regained the signal automatically. But uh, let's get it back in the air. Next thing I want to do is show you the photos that this takes. So, so starting the motors, and this time we'll do a manual takeoff by giving it throttle. And I'll get into the picture. <laughs> right about there. Say one click. We'll do another one. 
Another photo. And finally, one more photo. Suck in the gut. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Okay, starting the video camera one more time. Linking it up to the quadcopter. Or sticking up the cameras. And this time I'm going to go up a higher. I'm going to walk out about, oh, I don't know, right about here, I guess. A little bit further. And we're going to try that follow me. So follow me by pressing follow me command. And that's where it thinks I'm at. <laughs> Let's see if it follows me. We'll go for a little walk down the road. So, yeah, it's doing a good follow me. Now, the advantage, if you get a drone and, and it, and follow me is important to you. I strongly recommend that you get a drone with stabilized gimbal. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to look very, it's not going to look good. The video, the follow me video is not going to look good at all. Uh, the reason being, the drone bumps around a bit as you're doing follow me, as you notice here as I'm looking up at the drone. But if you got that gimbal, it's going to stabilize it. And what type of follow me do we got here? Is that a Hudson follow me or is that a... That's a DJI style sliding. So that's the follow me on this. And notice the drone bounces around a bit as it's regaining and losing the GPS signal from my phone. But that camera is remaining steady as I'm doing the follow me. Let's see if I can bring it in a little closer, can I? And we'll stay and follow me while I'm doing this. And come down a little lower. Yeah, yeah, it does. Can I lower the gimbal a bit? Yes, I can. So, I'm going to do follow me like this. Now, people want a good uh, follow me drone. This one's not too bad, although it bounces. Notice how it bounces a bit as I'm doing the follow me. But that wide angle lens comes in handy here because it's not pointed directly at me as you see here. It's pointing a little bit off. But will, will it eventually turn to look at me? We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's turning. So that's the follow me. Next thing we got to try, let's turn off follow me. And while we still have power here, we got 42% power. I'm going to go up a bit higher. Actually, let's go to the, the pad. Let's go back. We'll do an automatic return to home and landing. What's it do on a return to home and landing? Does it go up to 30 meters? Obviously it does. It looks like it. Before it goes over to the pad. And... Why is it going there for return to home? It returns to me! <laughs> does it return to me? That's interesting. Let's turn that off. Well, bring it down. Let's bring it down. Lowering the throttle. I didn't want it to go up that high. But it appeared to return to me, not to the uh, landing pad, which is interesting. A lot of people look for that. Okay, let's do a return to home from over there. Let's see if it comes to me or the landing pad. It comes... where does it go? I'm over here. The landing pad's way over there, about 20 meters away. It's turning... It's moving. It returns to me. It were, okay, so that's cool. So when you do return to home with this, be careful, folks. It's not going to... Uh, the command return to home returns to where you are at and flies right over your head. Let's turn that off now. But that's interesting. Let's come back down now, folks. So the return to home returns to your phone. Returns to your location, not to the... Uh, the command return to home. It doesn't return to the um, point where it took off, which is a, a bit different than most other drones, folks. Most other drones will return to where it took off from. This returns to you. But uh, I guess that's in handy. Comes in handy in case you're on a boat. <laughs> you're flying off of a boat. I guess this would work. <laughs> okay, uh, that would be pretty cool, actually. If if you need it to return to you instead of returning to its takeoff point because if you're out in a boat you could have moved from its position 
Okay, 37%. Let's do circle me while we got power. Uh, circle position is, where are you? Oh, there it is, in the upper right corner by the, by the uh, circle fly. Let's pick a distance of about 10 meters. And then hitting done. And then hitting confirm. And let's see what it does. It looks like it climbs first. And it goes up and it goes and it circles the position it was at. And it was right about here, I'm guessing. <laughs> so now I got a second battery, folks. I'm gonna plop a second battery in here if it gets too low to continue doing this because I want to test some other things out. Uh, a couple few other things I want to do. But that circle position seems to be working. Let's let it do a, at least one complete circle. <clears throat> and from that point, I will hit stop. Okay, where is that again? Up in the upper right corner, stop. And now it's stopped. Now let's bring it overhead and lower the gimbal. How low can I get that gimbal? Let's find out. Does it go all the way down? Uh, that's about it right there. I guess that's about it. It looks like you're about uh, 45 degrees down. Although I thought it would go 90 degrees down, but it doesn't appear to go any lower than 45. I'm pushing it down to see if it goes any lower, but that's about it. Okay, let's go into headless mode. Headless mode's activated. Which way is the headless mode direction? That way, obviously. So let me turn it. I'm getting the picture. Push forward and up. And say, the river flows. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> okay, doesn't want to go up any higher. There we go. Higher, higher and away. Now I'll raise up that gibble. Okay, which way is up? Up is this way. Okay, bring it back in. Oh, oh wait a minute, I gotta come out of headless mode. Headless mode's deactivated, pushing forward. Make sure it's coming in. So in all, this drone actually is not too bad, folks. It's a good flyer, good flyer so far. Which way is up? On that gimbal, up, gimbal, up. Now that's down, and then this must be up. There we go. It's mislabeled on here. <laughs> so up is down, and down is up on the label, <laughs> on the uh, scroll wheel. So do I got time for, yeah, I got 31% voltage. Let's land it on the pad for a second, folks, because I want to try one other thing here. Landing or not, or near the pad at least. Ah, good enough. <laughs> right there. What I want to do, folks, is let's go into the. Um, let's stop the video one more time, though, by the way. Make sure we got that video recording. And then starting the video one more time. And I am going into the waypoint selection, which is right by the circle me. And selecting waypoints. Now, the maps that you get with this. Okay, I'm waiting for the waypoints to start. VS GPS to stop. So I'm going to have to reboot the app. So hold on, folks. Okay, the app, I re restarted the app and everything's fine again. But let's hit that waypoints feature and see if that waypoints actually opens or if it's going to crash again. It's crashed again. So waypoints worked at, uh, when I wasn't connected to the drone, but it seems to crash the app right now. But. Okay, I'm going to give it one more chance to, to see <laughs> if the, the app is going to crash again. Hitting some waypoints again. And again, it crashes. So, waypoints feature needs some work with VSGPS with this particular drone, folks. It's, I've had this work with other drones, but it seems to have an issue with this particular drone, or maybe with my particular phone. So, we're going to stop doing waypoints. What I want to do next is actually see, this is supposed to be a fast flyer. Let's see how it flies in higher rates. So, uh, let me start the app again. The app is actually still running. 
in the background hitting start. Okay, I'm starting the video. The video is recording and started. And this time, uh, let's go into higher rate once we get into the air. So starting the motors, down and out. Motors start. Manual takeoff. And we are recording. Let me stick up the cameras. Okay. And let's go to higher rate. Uh, that's two. <clears throat> let's try it out and see how it flies in second rate. All right. Third rate. This is its highest speed. Let's up higher. This is its highest speed, folks. That's okay. It's not super fast, though. Um, I don't know about it being 11 meters per second. It's, and it slides quite a bit in hard turns. <laughs> so we'll go back to beginner. Beginner rate. And let's just go down the road. Uh, what are we at? 30%. Now, the VSGPS app is not the most accurate in regards to um, battery power. You know, reported battery power is coming back from the, the drone. Uh, let me look. Okay, receiver power is low, it says. So we are getting low, I'm guessing. We're at 30% battery power on both. So I'm not going to go too far out. That's about the max range I'm going to fly, but we're going to fly around and see, until it does something. Pushing forward until it either drops from the sky or lands, but I'm going to keep it close. Okay, there, I think that's a low battery. Ah, there we go. So that's what it does. Here comes its low battery return to home. Okay, there was no geofence uh, for the low battery return to home. I don't think there was. I'm going to try to fly it a little more. We'll see if we can fly in close. Because a lot of these drones have a geofence that won't let you fly uh, further than uh, 20 or 30 meters away. Let's see if I can still fly. I want to come down lower too. I don't want to be that high in case it does drop from the sky. <laughs> nope, there's no geofence on this. So keep that in mind too, folks. I'm going to higher rate too. This is a little bit too slow for me. Coming back. And we'll bring it in. And I'm going to call it quits here because I'm not sure if this... Since it doesn't have a geofence, I'm not sure if it's going to drop or what. But uh, both my phone and the app saying we are low battery. Actually, the app says... What does the app say? 26% battery. Okay, we'll fly it around 26% battery until it gets super low. But notice the lights are flashing. Uh, I'm not sure I want to fly it any further. The lights are flashing. Um, it says it's low. Uh, the LCD screen says this thing has barely any power left in it at all. Although the app says we are at 26%. So I'm going to stop the video recording one more time here. Making sure both stop. And I want to do a couple more photos. Because <laughs> this is a nice bright shirt I'm wearing today, folks. <laughs> But uh, give you my thoughts on this. Okay, starting the motor up or camera up again, and I'm gonna do the thoughts while it's flying here. Okay, both are recording. So coming down lower and closer. Actually, right about there. And let you know. Well, all in all, everything seemed to work except waypoints. That doesn't surprise me. Waypoints is always an issue uh, with these third-party apps that they use with these particular drones like VSGPS. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, in this case, it didn't. It crashed my phone. It could be my phone fault. I don't know, since I'm trying. I'm using Bob as in at the same time. Um, other than that, though, uh, yeah, the, the stability looks good. We'll see what the camera looks like in post-production here when I uh, download the video and upload this YouTube video. But uh, all in all, everything seemed to work fine except except the waypoints. Stability's okay. Uh, I got wind hitting it right now. It's bouncing around a bit. The wind, that's the alt altimeter working with it. But um, if you're looking for a stabilized drone, 
Uh, the follow me worked well. Uh, the only thing this doesn't have, it doesn't have obstacle avoidance, so if you're using follow me, keep that in mind. Uh, you gotta make sure it stays clear of trees and other obstructions. Okay, there's the actual low battery return to home. <laughs> what do you know? That's it. That is its true flight time. So, that is the flight of the FQ777 F8. It's actually a nice drone. Um, it works well. Uh, kind of like it. We'll see how well its video is, though, in post-production. I got a feeling there might be a little bit of jello. Uh, there might be a lot of bit of jello. We'll find out because whenever you see these long lens barrels on these cameras, they tend to jitter around a bit, especially from vibrations from the motors. We'll see if that actually happens, though. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. Let's get the sun in my face. I hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.